when it actually comes to drilling the breathe hole itself this is a very simple operation and it isn't something that I go worrying yourself about now drilling a hole in my books in terms of metal work is only third behind filing and sawing so drilling is a fairly simple operation however as I've already said if you're not confident in doing this then I'm sure that you can show this video to a friend or relative who would have the confidence to do it and get the job done for you other than drilling the breathe hole when it comes to fitting the regulator most of the rest of the work is taking your gun to bits and then having the patience to adjust the pressure of the regulator and the tension of the springs to get the rifle working perfectly when it comes to marking up for drilling the breathe hole we've already recommended that you put some masking tape along the cylinder under the barrel after you've degreased it with some light spirit uh, if you haven't got any masking tape and you think oh I can't be asked uh, please take note some uh, pens that you might think oh I've just put some pen marks onto the air reservoir will have a tendency to affect the, the uh, bluing or blacking and take it off putting some tape onto the cylinder protects that and then the other reason for putting the tape on is when you come to dot punch onto the cylinder if you've just got a sharp punch and a shiny metal round surface it can be quite easy if you're not bang on spot on even when you're quite near the center you push down hard as is demonstrated here the punch may slip and scratch your cylinder if you've got the masking tape or another form of tape applied to the cylinder then once it's on there you can push quite hard at different angles and the punch won't slip down the side of the metalwork and cause damage so apart from the masking tape being used to mark up clearly where you're going to drill the hole it also helps secure the punch in exactly the right place without slipping when you're working once you've removed your air reservoir from your rifle Although there's masking tape on the top near the barrel, you still don't want to damage the rest of the surface finish if you can help it. So, if you take an old kitchen or cardboard toilet roll tube, you can make yourself the equivalent of a hospital surgical gown and fit it over to protect the rest of the finish while you work upon the air reservoir. When it comes to drilling the breathe hole, we recommend between a one and a half millimeter drill and a maximum really of a three and a half millimeter drill a one and a half millimeter drill is quite fine uh, and if you think that's too small for you to use and you don't feel confident then please uh, use a two and a half mil drill uh, when it comes to the drills please also go to the extravagant expense of either buying a new drill or making sure that the drill that you're going to use is in very good condition and is nice and sharp when you come to mark your reservoir ready for drilling the hole please remember to make sure that the end of the cylinder is lined up with uh, where it locks up to on the on the action mounting block uh, please don't rush and suddenly think to yourself oh we'll mark it up just here and getting it in the wrong place make sure that it lines up exactly how it would do when the rifle is assembled uh, and also make sure that your markings are plain and easy to see uh, I've done a few jobs in the past myself woodworking jobs and other metal working jobs where you think you've marked the work you've gone away for two minutes come back and the lines that you've put onto the metal itself are that fine 
you get confused with another couple of scratches and you end up machining or drilling something in the wrong place so please make sure that all the lines that you put on are crisp clear and positive so there we have the two o-rings the marks where the barrel sits above and then you're going to put your breathe hole between those two lines along the centre line. Now for working on your reservoir if you're an engineer you've probably got a set of V blocks anyway and know exactly what you're doing. If you've seen something like this in a friend's uh, garage or shed or a relative's then probably best if you ask them if you can borrow it and then you can securely hold your air reservoir within that on your drill press or in your vice whilst you carry out the work. If you've not got one of these or you don't know anyone who has then it's very simple and I would advise using some old pieces of wood. Here we've got a piece of ply with a couple of bits of I think it's coving, wooden coving, uh, simply glued into place and that's very good for holding your air reservoir secure to stop it rolling about when you're working on it. To get it to be a bit of an extra purchase in there you could either use some uh, double sided sellotape or one or two blobs of uh, blue tack or white tack just in the bottom and then if you press your cylinder down onto that then that will hold it secure and you can work on it without going to drill or dot punch without it rolling about. When it comes to making the dot punch mark, uh, a dot punch is a very simple tool that you most likely have around in your workshop. You can either have a, a solid traditional punch, a self actuating punch where when you press down on it, it fires and creates the dot punch mark. However, if you don't have uh, a dot punch at home and you can't seem to borrow one, something that you might be able to do to solve the problem is if you can get a, a masonry nail off of uh, somebody you know from somewhere, a masonry nail, as it says, is for going into uh, mortar and bricks and things in building, and it's an extremely strong. Uh, an extremely hard sort of a nail so if you can get a, a nice size one of those like this and bring the end to a sharp point then that should be as equally effective now when you come to uh, putting the mark in itself it's very important that you hold the dot punch firmly and securely now I've angled this piece of tube round so as you can see it better but when you've got the dot punch on, you want to be pressing down with your fingers uh, towards the tube as hard as you can. If you don't do this, what can uh, quite often happen is you put the dot punch on and get it in place. Uh, and if you're holding it too loose, you can end up with a, a sort of a, a bang bang. You don't notice it because it's so quick, but the hammer will jump. And when you go and look at the work, there'll be two punch marks next to each other. So it's very important that you hold the punch and hold it pressed firmly down. Now, when it comes to the size of hammer to use, I've got two very old hammers I've been found out, just to give an example of the sort of thing that you might have laying around. They're not pristine and brand new, but if you can gauge these to the size of my hand, for dot punching most cylinders with a sort of punch that you're going to be using that's really about the smallest size hammer and this is going to be the largest size hammer I certainly wouldn't recommend a hammer any bigger than that otherwise you're probably liable to uh, cause more damage than actually just put a, a dot punch mark in so for this I'll choose this small hammer and the masonry nail so if you lay it on sideways so you can make sure that the tip is on exactly where you want it and then bring it to the vertical and then give it a nice firm clout. Now fingers crossed we should just have a small mark in here. Now I'll peel this 
I'll peel this tape off just to show you but obviously in reality leave the tape on so as it can uh, protect the cylinder whilst you do the clean up operation and the drilling. Now the dot punch mark you've ended up with shouldn't be too big but it should be big enough for the tip of the drill to sit in to keep it in line when you start to drill the hole. When it comes to drilling the hole, having the drill sticking down as far as this isn't a particularly good idea because it could have a tendency to flex off a little bit if it's not exactly in the right line and you're not holding it very tight. It's best to uh, put it further up inside the chuck and clamp it securely. It's less liable to wobble or veer off when it's set, set shorter. The smaller the drill, the faster the drill needs to be going. Uh, so set your drill to a fairly high speed. Do little pecking motions. Don't try and push the drill through all at once. That's a bad idea. So just do little pecks. And once you've broken through onto the inside, if you go up and down a little bit, this will help remove a little bit of extra metal and make the burr inside easier to break off because it will be more brittle. should be no more difficult than that. Now one little tip is if you have got a selection of drills at home and you've gone through with say a 1.5 mil drill if you've got a 1.6 or 1.7 mil drill then it could be uh, useful to then go through this and up and work this up and down afterwards and that will remove a little bit more of the burn so make the job even easier still. I've now put in the slightly bigger drill, set the drill on a slightly faster speed and once I'm through I shall go up and down and just move the, the work about just a little bit to try and break off any of the internal burrs that are quite loose. So that's the hole drilling now done. Now your cylinder should hopefully still be covered in its little surgical suit. Uh, leave that on whilst you continue to deburr the inside of the hole and you're working on the cylinder. Uh, the best way to remove the burr which will form on the inside of the cylinder if you've got them is to use a small circular ball ended dental burr uh, like dentists use. They should be available on eBay or from your local hardware shop. These are particularly good for removing the, the little burr on the inside of aluminium air gun reservoirs. So if you've drilled your hole to an appropriate size for the burr then you should just simply be able to put the burr into a handheld drill or a little high speed dremel put it through to the inside and remove much of the burr in this way here hopefully you can see some that I've done earlier that hole has been cleaned and so is this one where the burr is left on these two when it comes to removing the burr from the inside of the cylinder you really need to use round section file. Preferably this section should be slightly smaller than the inside diameter curve so as it will get right up against the edge of where the burr is. So as to protect any thread and the end of your cylinder you'll best wrap the file in masking tape and then put some marks on 
where the hole is so that when you've got the file inside you can work in just that particular area don't press on too hard because of scratching the inside of the cylinder but just enough to knock the main burrs and get them get them off finally once you've used the files to carefully remove as much of the burr as you possibly can to give it a final clean up you best use a piece of plastic wooden or aluminium rod or tube stick some appropriate wet and dry paper to the end of this rod and wrap it round you should put a mark on where the end of the cylinder is in comparison to the breathe hole so as you're not sanding down here way past it so you know where that is and then to create a little bit of side pressure inside the tube if you wrap a little piece of paper tissue or soft sponge in with the uh, wet and dry then once you've got this into the cylinder you can use that to remove the rest of the bearing just by making sure you press and work it in that particular spot uh, for more on polishing the inside of your cylinder up uh, this is for steel cylinders the polishing up not for aluminium please go and watch the video on cleaning the inside of your reservoir ready for installation of a regulator and that talks more about the grades of wet and dry you should be using and how just to clean out any scratches that might be in the cylinder apart from where you've drilled the breathe hole so once you've got off most of the burrs and you've cleaned the breathe hole you're about done and dusted and then finally once you're happy with the inside of the air reservoir and the rest of the gun's ready to go back together take off the cardboard surgical jacket and peel off the masking tape there'll probably be a little burr on the outside of the hole and if you use a small sharp countersink make sure it is a good sharp one either in a slow, op uh, slow running battery operated drill or just with your fingers place it into the top of the hole press and go round and then that should just remove any little burr that's remaining on there and that's your cylinder all ready to go back onto your rifle now for you doom and gloom merchants who are saying I haven't got a small drill press uh, etc think laterally here's what I'm going to do very quickly in the simplest possible way is a piece of steel tubing blue tack fasten it securely and tightly into a three point corner so that it's secured that way that way and that way and that's nice and nice and tight so hopefully that's not going anywhere and here you have it you should be able to lean one arm uh, wrist and drill against the wall you can use the floor as a support as well to hold it in the right place there's a hole that we drilled earlier so let's do a second one So there you have it, two holes simply drilled into a piece of steel tubing using the most basic of tools. So you should be quite able to drill a quite accurate breathe hole in your reservoir no matter what level of equipment and skill that you've got.